Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video I'm going to take a look at the deck that is not my own. This actually shows Tempo Warrior build that show played to Legend in September. And I really wanted to give this deck a try because I've always been a fan of Tempo Warrior builds. Tempo Warrior builds are a lot of fun. And when something was advertised as a Tempo Warrior with the credentials that it can make Legend I was of course immediately interested. But okay, two things. One thing, yes, you can play this deck to legend. Absolutely. It's a climbable deck. And two, no, it's not really a tempo warrior, not at all. Tempo warrior used to be able to really play very aggressively. Control the board, control the game, mount increasing amounts of threats and win the game. And this deck doesn't really accomplish that. Okay, so the deck has Frothing Berserker in it, and the deck has Cochrane Elite in it. And if you happen to draw exactly those cards, yeah, you're able to do some kinds of pressure plays. But for the most part, this deck still plays a very control style of a game. Especially when you're matched up against Odd Rogues and Zooloks and Tempo Mages, which also happen to be some of the best matchups of this deck. So, while this has some tempo means, it still plays a very slow game, and it even has some trouble playing against combo decks because it's generally not fast enough to do it. But it's not a pure control deck either, so I would call this a slow mid-range deck. That would be an apt name for what this deck is and what it's capable of. A valid comparison would be something like Control Paladin and Mid-Range Paladin some expansions back. So Control Paladin, Mid-Range Paladin, the difference was like you have Doomsayers and you have Pyromancers, okay, you're a Control Paladin. You still have Consecration and Equality, but you can still be a Mid-Range Paladin. And it's pretty much like that. The deck lacks the main slow board clear cards of Warrior. There's no Reckless Flurry, there's no Brawl. It lacks some hard removal, there's only one copy of Execute, there's no Shield Slams. But it still has these very control-oriented cards in it. There's Warpath, there's Acolyte of Pain for card draw, there's Super Collider. So what this deck does is it controls the flow of the game for the most part. If you're playing against an aggressive deck, you're fighting on the board, you use your rush minions, even use frothing berserkers for board control. And then you try to swing the game a bit later on, when you get to stuff like Grom, Lich King, and the Boom and Omega simply value. Fairly control-oriented game plan. And if you're up against control decks, you try to apply some pressure, you hope to find your frothings, your Gorkrons, you might be able to use Darius to gain some tempo advantage, dynamic can sometimes be used for offense as well. And if you can deal enough damage in the mid game, you're able to finish it off with Grom. But even against control decks where you are clearly the beatdown deck, they are defending, you're attacking, you're not actually applying a whole lot of pressure, it's more like a steady stream of pressure that's coming on throughout the game. So in some ways I was a little bit sad because no, Tempo Warrior has not made a comeback. This is not a Tempo Warrior deck. This is a slow mid-range deck. On the other hand, it can be something nice to play this instead of these very heavily fatigue-oriented Control Warrior decks for a change, so it's still a nice deck to play. In the current meta you can just expect that you're playing the Control role at least half of the time or more. And then you play still in many ways very similar to a control warrior. But sometimes you get the pleasure of hitting Grom to the face, which is always a nice thing to do. As always, I've recorded a bunch of gameplay material of this deck for you, so let's go take a look at it in action. Mobat might be fine. Let's let's take this and try to beat Sue. I mean it, I've faced a lot of even locks lately as well. But I guess it's still the zoo that I need to be most concerned about. Zoo with a turn one soul infusion. No worries, no worries, right? Well, at least it wasn't a killer set or something, but... There can still be some very, very annoying things coming. 
Let's find a blood racer at least. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a super collider. And that he had a, this in his opening hand is also quite unfortunate. Now, if he has some healing cards, then any damage that I deal right now is going to be rendered meaningless. I think this is a blood racer turn. I think we do a blood racer like this. Because next turn I can still do stuff like double warpath. So I can deal some AoE. And double warpath and this, that's a total of 3 damage. If he heals everything for 2, then this one becomes a 4 3. So I might be able to hit like into this one. And clear the board. Maybe. There are still ways. It heavily depends on his healing. Healing cards right now. There's no fungal man's option yet this turn, but that would be next turn. So I'm not concerned about happy ghouls. I'm most concerned about the fungal enchanter, really. Which heals everything by two. But I think this was still the correct line. Taunt minions. Void walkers would be annoying. Void walker and healing. Well, now there can't be void walker plus healing anymore. There can only be the voodoo doctor. And this is simply not enough. Because I can still clear this with the warpath. So I'm fine with this line. Yeah, I'm more than... I'm, I'm perfectly fine with this. Go ahead, put everything out there. And then I just hit into this fellow. And I will do a double warpath. To clean up the rest of the board. And I, of course, went down to 17 health, but... I think that was still a good setup. And good recognition from me that I needed to hit into one of those doubling imps to render his chances as low as possible. Now I have the option to play Dino Medic if there's a total of 5 health on the board. Let's say he plays Despicable Dreadlord or something. Dino Medic would deal with that. Dino Medic doesn't quite deal with this though. It is guaranteed to kill one of them. I think I'll take that. And he will still need to deal with the Dino Medic. Because if he doesn't, then I could simply magnetize Ziliax onto it. Soulfire would deal with that, but he's pretty low in resources. And playing a minion plus Fungal Mancer. Trading would be one way to go here. That's of course reasonable. I have to say that I probably now need to go for a triple warpath play. Just to clean up his board in case there's any fungal mancers. Instead of that Ziliax play. I can still do Ziliax later. I could Ziliax on to turn him over to hold on the warpath for longer. But that would still leave him with the Fungal Man's board. I think we're going with the Triple Warpath. One, and a two, and a three. And this one goes face. I believe this is okay. Now there could be a Despicable Dreadlord, which gets the kill on this for free. Other than that, I have this as an option for Zilliax platform. So far it's actually looking pretty decent. I still have a lot of resources here. Well, that was... that was weak. But I still have to keep in mind the fungal mancer possibility. So how do I best deal with this? Maybe it is time to Ziliax. He might be able to silence it. I actually don't want to magnetize Ziliax on this. I think I just killed that one. And I'll just play Ziliax and kill off that one and heal for three. 
and rather retain two minions on the board than one that is very weak to silence. I think this is a preferable state of affairs. Do I want to kill the Mossy Horror? Or does Tilix just go face it? I play Lich King. To be honest, I think I like that. Let's just jump a Lich King at face with the Tilix. Puts him down to 10. So he has got to feel a little bit uncomfortable here. And there might be a way for me to clean up the way. He has played one Serenite Chain Gang and one Void Walker. He obviously has more taunts in the deck and he has five cards. But like playing Fungal Mancer to buff up this Mossy Horror doesn't feel that great. It doesn't really kill a Lich King. Killing a Lich King would require using Soul Fire or using Leroy or Doom God. Fungal Enchanter does get him out of reach. Oh, it's going to be a soul fire on the Lich King then. I see. Mm, that's pretty decent. So I would have 5 plus 6. I would have 11 damage here if I went all for the damage with the anti-magic shell. I have to say I find that idea intriguing. 4 damage needs to be spent on Celiax, he can do that. 5 damage needs to be spent on this, he can do that one too. Hmm. Fine, maybe not. Maybe not then. I guess it's simply a blood razor here. Kill of this one. Play a militia commander. Kill off this one. Hit face with the Ziliax. I suppose this is fine. Let's clear the board. It's safer that way. Going all face, he would have means on the board to clean up the board. Feels a little bit risky. This is fine unless he has another Fungal Mancer, which he could have. You see, one Fungal Mancer, he just managed to draw four cards. But this is not going to be enough at all. Or is it? So if I Mossy, that kills everyone but this. Five, six, seven. I can only do seven to face. It's still Mossy and Anti-Magic Shell. What else is it seriously going to be? Not fine. Maybe I'll even keep the Super Collider. So what kind of rogue? I hope it's an odd rogue, because now I have the Ooze. And Ooze is perfect to delay Tug. It's odd rogue. Okay. This was the matchup I was hoping for, more than Quest Rogue. And let's see what we can do here. Find the Ciliax, I have the Ooze. His most likely turn 2 is going to be Dagger. I guess he could also coin Dagger this turn. Yeah, I figured he might not. I don't have particularly impressive plays for this turn, but we go for this line. He daggers up now and uses the dagger to kill the one when right. Alternatively, he could coin if he has something like a fledgling. But this is the most predictable line of play. And the gluttonous ooze will prevent him from playing a tug next turn, buying me some very essential time. Gluttonous ooze could also be used when he has deadly poison on the dagger. But I believe these first moments are the most crucial ones. Because now he can't play the tug. 
on the sequence of cold blood on this to kill the gluttonosaurus, but that seems like a waste. So this effectively delays the attack by a turn. Okay, that's a good top deck. Just jam that immediately. I expect him to kill it, but then I have like Dino Medic coming in. And it's not even that easy to kill it right now. But Dino Medic can answer another tug if it's played here. Okay. Oh, it's an SI7 agent. SI7 agent is more annoying. Because this is not answerable with a Dino Medic anymore. Nor is this unserved with the Super Collider. And then there's the potential for Fungal Mancer plays. Ciliax is not strong here. I think this still needs to be a Dino Medic. Hopefully it can kill two minions, but it's more likely to kill just one. It was able to kill two. That was that was big. Because this prevents a Fungal Mancer board. So that was important. He still has a lot of resources left. Seven cards in hand. He still has, also has the coin. Maybe he's going to be keeping that for some kind of Wild Spine Slayer place. He's played a couple of one drops already. One drop coin Wild Spine Slayer set up for another board to play Fungal Mancer on. Then depends on the positioning whether I can have a good Super Collider turn. If the Wild Spine is played to the side and next to the SI7 agent, then that would be a nice Super Collider board. I have no issues with the tag, I suppose. Oh, but he is also sacrificing the SI7 agent, so the it doesn't actually help with the tag. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I can't super collide the tag away. Well... I can't warp path the tag away either. So at this point I'd simply have to play the Acolyte and armor up. Let's see. This might be a way for him. Hmm. That lone tug is actually annoying at this point. But now this means that dagger alone doesn't kill the acolyte, unless he can buff up the dagger. Does he want to spend an attack from the tug into the acolyte? And I'm trying to set up so that maybe I can get a super collider turn. Or a Warpath turn. I have Triple Warpath available. Obviously that doesn't kill the Tugger either. It does kill a Fledgling. Ha, this guy's toast. Okay. So I can't get rid of the 5-5 five, five tug right now. Oh, the Execute I could. But I suppose that's for the next turn. I just kill these two this turn and armor up. Do I even armor up or do I just play a Town Crier? No. Town Crier fetches Darius. I believe I can afford to just play the Town Crier right. Because next turn I have the Warpath execute things coming. I believe I can afford Town Crier here. This will also give another target that maybe he uses some resources on that instead of my face. That should be fine with me. I now have the Execute and I have the Warpath. So I'm not very concerned about anything he has. Okay. So this is the Warpath Execute turn. So we Warpath once, and we Warpath twice, and we Warpath three times, and then we execute the tug. And there we got rid of that board, which is nice. I have some Rush Minions in hand. I have some Armor gain, I have some Health gain. He has plenty of resources left, but I should be well on my way to being able to deal with this. Hmm. 
No. Does he want to play another minion? Oh, that was an interesting minion. I have to admit. That was an interesting minion to play. But there's no easy answer to this one. Hmm. Intriguing. And, I mean, he's going to have a fungal answer. It's been so long. So there's going to be a fungal answer in hand. If I hit here, both of these die. I would have nine mana. I think I need to set it this up with the protein and the acrolyte. To go with there and armor up. But he can fungal mancer to buff up this Anoyatron and the Tug. But I have Darius and Ziliax potentially next turn. The plot thickens. The plot really thickens here. I'm assuming the fungal mancer is going to come out. Can I deal with that Tug or can I not? I'm uncertain. Scary times. Okay. And that's the fungal answer, right? Yes, as expected. Gets the kill on the prodding. Okay. I can still lose this game, that's interesting. I did not expect that. It's a good firefly too. So this one hits the Divine Shield away, Darius kills this one. Then I need to hit into the Tug. Tug kills this one and then I played Ziliax and Ziliax hits the Tug. But I might die. Unhappy turn of events. He has two more cards in hand, so I might genuinely die here. That is unhappy. I don't think I have a better line here. I could take a 50-50 here to have increased chance of living. But I think I have to risk it. Now, I'm dead to Wild Spine Slayer Gold Blood and Leroy Gold Blood. There is no Leroy Gold Blood. Intriguing. So that's the flame elemental he has there. So he has a flame elemental in hand now. Okay. If I clear his entire board, he can only draw one card, so he cannot kill me. I find this intriguing. I can play both Omega assemblies here. One can kill the fledgling. Mossy can kill the minion so that I can armor up. There's no way for him to deal 11 damage with one card. Because that card is a flame elemental. Which means that next turn I can probably play Boom. Hoping to pick up some more cards. Reasonable, reasonable. I think I want to armor up before Boom. I think I value that more than Boom Hero Power this turn. There's only one in five for me to get the seven armor. So let's armor up and then go Boom. So I get further and further out of reach. This one goes face, and I can play the Eternium over. 
That's even more armor unless he goes for a wild spine slayer on that one. But now I'm at 18, two cards. So even with Leroy code, but that's just 12 with the dagger too. How many cards can he have? I'll deal three damage. I'm going to make myself a taunt minion, right? No, I'm just going to... No, I'm one off from killing him. I'm one off from killing him with Grom and hit the Grom, so... I believe I am in fact making a taunt minion for myself here. Let's make a taunt minion. I like taunt minions. Don't do... Yeah, I, I can draw the final blood razor, it's fine. Okay, yeah, this is good. This is good. One of lethal. Yes, I realized that. And that's why I went for the taunt. So 15 health plus taunt. Makes it pretty difficult for him to get true. And whenever this takes damage I gain another taunt. And when this takes damage I gain armor. So if you can't kill me this turn, and you need to kill the taunt, and when you kill the taunt you have to get some minions on the board, then how on earth are you going to be able to deny all this good stuff that is going to come? And I also managed to find the 7 damage hero power. So I have 5 out of me 6 damage. I don't have a way to deal 6 damage. Sooner or later I will need to set up that lethal though. This one kills here. Yeah, I think we're going for that lethal setup now. With the blood razor play here. And then we hit there, we get two taunts, we get seven armor. Yeah, there's absolutely no way for him to return into the game. I think I can try with this hand. I would rather have a blood razor. But I have a play for one. I have some card draw coming. This too. Ouch. Maybe I should have went for more aggressive mulligan. It starts to look like this mulligan is insufficient. Yeah, maybe I should have just mulligan hard for the razor. Oh, that Light Warden is so scary. He probably has some healing coming too. I need this Frothing Berserker out here to challenge it. And I need to hit there to buff up the Frothing. Interesting, no healing. But this big guy dies to the pudding. Okay. Very interesting times. So Frodding kills the big guy. Okay. Then what? Now I have the Dynomedic, I have the Super Collider, both before he can play... Both just before he can play Fungal Mancer. So this is Super Collider turn. Fungal Mancer can still win him this game, right? It can. Fungal Man City here is still huge, puts me down to 6. I probably can't recover from that. There's no Fungal Man City though. That's interesting. Okay. 
I'm still a little bit low on health here. So if I hit the Keleset, it hits here. There's one, two, three, four health on the board. I can hit this one there. I can hit the Keleset, hit this one there. And play Dynomatic. I will be at eight. I hit the Kale asset. And I play the Dynomatic. I think I need to play the Omega simply this turn as well. I guess for Antonium Rover. I can still die from 8. People die from 8. My Temple Warrior or World Warrior? For fun. No other reason. Literally no other reason. This calls for Dr. Boom. Let's go to 11. I can die to Lee Roy. If I go to 11, what do I die to? Because I could also attack here and execute. Take 2 from the board. Could be 4 if there's a fungal answer. Right, it's boom turn. I will also give the turning rover rush next turn. This has got to be it. Another soul fire. So Leroy can still kill me in the very near future. Down to five. Eternium Rover. There, this one goes to three. Eternium Rover. Rover. No turning over Trooper Warpath doesn't kill everything. But I need the armor. Can he find the Leroy? Maybe I don't need the armor right now. Maybe I can go with just Warpath here. I couldn't figure out a way to get the Eternium Rover armor and live and clear. But this leaves me dead to Leroy. Ouch. Well, that was annoying. I needed to figure out the Eternium Rover play. There probably was an Eternium Rover play, but I couldn't figure it out. High thermal mode. So another mage. Let's see what this mage is going to bring to the table. A mana berm. Hmm. That is surprising. Oh well. We go in and we'll see what happens. He has the coin, so he can really start buffing this fellow up. Also, I don't have a coin to proc a counter spell. That's a pretty swift pick. Oh! Extra primordial glyphs. So, the first pick was plus one attack for the mana worm. Respectable. But still trades. How would you trade? What do you have to gain if you trade? Nothing. I want to hit there. I think I'm hitting face. I don't think hitting that one helps me right here. We have many secrets. But this this play was just weak. You always have to go face here. 
That's puzzling. I'm debating between playing an Acolyte or trying the Warpath. Trouble CD just subscribed. Thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate that. I think we try with the Warpath. Let's see if it's a counter spell. It is not a counter spell. I'm loving it. We get rid of the board. Beautiful. I'm at 35, I got rid of the board. On the other hand, it will kill the next minion that I play, so probably I will have to go something like a Dino Medic, I take 2 damage, I deal 5 damage to his board. But this gives him an opening to play those Cinder Storms and Arcade Missiles, which is unfortunate. Well, this is cool. A little bit hate to lose the Dino Medic, but I think I think this is still needed. Yep, there's the runes. I'm from Sweden. We're not that good, you know. Really, I think Swedes generally speak great English. Luna's Pocket Galaxy from the Glyph. I'm just not sure how good that one is for him, really. Do I want to deal a couple of damage to his face? And the answer is no. I'm not in that much of a hurry. I just want to draw more cards. So let's play this fellow out here and armor up. Luna's was definitely not a card that I would have picked. The step deck is not so minion heavy, but maybe? Maybe it's going to get the job done. This will be interesting. But it's most so many of the so much of the deck is still spells. But maybe if you can play like three minions, four minions in a turn. I don't find more AoE. I guess it's possible. I think I'll take the two cards and not take damage from this fellow. That seems like a plan. Because I also want to find the Gladanosaurus for his Alunet. But this also opens up room for those... Everything opens up room for those Cinder Storms and stuff. There is my Gladanosaurus at least. I want to prime this weapon for use on... Getting the Whirlwind effect down there. Seven cards in hand, eight mana available with the coin. That can mean some cosmic anomaly. Cosmic anomaly and lots of damage things. The cinder storms are still there. What? Antonidas? Yeah, some people have started taking in Antonidas into this deck. That's pretty painful. Because with 8 mana I have to take 5 from the Antonidas and now he got an additional 12 damage. This is a tech made into the deck specifically to beat Odd Warrior. Or have a chance to beat Odd Warrior. I don't have to take any damage from this though. Because I can kill it with the Grom. I think I have to go for that line, right? I believe I have to. Yeah, I believe I have to go for that line. Avoiding the 5 damage right now is very, very important. If I can kill the Antonidas, I can have a minion with a little bit of health on the board. But this is going to be rough. He has 4 Fireballs, Polymorph, 2 Frostbolts, both Cosmic Anomalies left. With my poor little regular hero power, armoring through all of that is going to be so difficult. Death Spite or Blood Razor, which do you like more? Death Spite, obviously. He had double Cinder Storm in hand too. Well, that feels bad. Oh, 
So I have the option to Ziliax this down. I know his hand is two fireballs and something, and he wants to kill the Ziliax. And now with the Shooting Star gone, Double Cinder Stone gone, RK Missiles gone, does he have the tools to kill Ziliax effectively? On the other hand, if I could find Dynomadic or return him rover, I can also try to pick up something from here, right? I could pick up three from this next turn. No, it's cool to try to pick up something immediately. I can pick up another Ziliax. Well, this makes my choice pretty easy. I can throw this Ziliax. I can throw this Ziliax over here. Go to 23. I have another Ziliax available. And he still wants to deal with this, and now he threw away a lot of that random damage. So much of the damage that he had that just does things is gone. Yeah, he had to throw six damage in the Ziliax. Man, that has to feel bad. Okay. But I can play a Corcoran here. That was runes. That's fine. So I could play Eternium Rover and Ziliax. But he would just fireball the Ziliax next turn. So I believe what I'm doing here is going to be Darius and the Eternium Rover. Darius will kill this one and another play an Eternium Rover. Now he will have to be concerned about this Eternium Rover and the armor that it can give me. Both explosive runes are gone, so that's going to be a counter spell. Well, I don't have a lot, a lot of stuff to counter. And we get rid of the second fireball created by Antonidas. No more Antonidas fireballs. I like that. I also like this Dino Medic. I can just armor up here. I don't have to hurry with the Ziliax. Obviously there is a Cosmic Anomaly Shooting Star play left. That would deal with the current mechs. But if it's not coming right now, I have the potential to Ziliax into the Dino Medic. We have many secrets. Not coming. Cosmic Anomaly is not coming yet. Just another fireball. I'm fine with another fireball. That's fireball number three. One more fireball to go. So I'm going to throw away a Corcoran Elite into this one. Then I can't armor up this turn. That is acceptable. Corcoran Elite will kill this one. I know it's a counter spell. But I can Ziliax into the Dino Medic, so that I can maintain the Divine Shield. And I can heal for 6 now. And now there's a 6-6 six, six with Divine Shield that he wants to kill. He has already thrown 3 Fireballs. And boom. There you go. Warlock, so I have to assume it's 2. And this looks like a hand that I can use against 2. Alright. Oh, it's even. Even is more difficult than to with this particular deck. Because it's pretty hard to answer those giants. The upside is that I'm on the coin. Which means that he can only play giant on four. And this looks like giant on four coming. Well, not necessarily. But now I do have to think, do I want to coin a frothing berserker? This turn 3, can I play another frothing? Yeah, I, I want to coin frothing. It's coin frothing time. 
He can play a 2-drop and he can still play the giant next turn. Oh. That's annoying. So if I play Warpath, this one goes down to 6 and I can kill it. Then he can hellfire the board. But that's still probably the line here. Because now I have enough to kill the Doomsayer. So he will need to find... No, he will probably need to play Hellfire now. Which at least takes his turn. So there's some kind of an upside. But then I play another Frothing and then he has the option to simply play... He has the option to simply play Spellstone after he has damaged himself with the Hellfire. Oh, Spellstone works as well, I guess. I go Frothing and Rover. He cannot Hellfire and Defile yet this turn. I mean, I guess it's Blood Razor turn. That opens up. Well, there's Hellfire Defile anyway, but that opens up just the Hellfire. Militia Commander would not open up the Hellfire play. Then he would still need the Defile. Militia Commander goes down to one health, so there's no Defile chain, unless he has a two health minion. He doesn't have any of those. But Militia Commander can also be used to answer. Giant, so I think I'm going with the. I think I'm going with the Blood Razor line here. I think this is better. Just Blood Razor and Punch. Obviously opens up the Hellfire. But I still have means to answer Giants later, so I think I'm fine. The Hellfire. Oh, an ooze. That's an interesting, interesting one. So, in order to enable Militia Commander to answer Giant next turn, I would have to Blood Razor this turn, and I would have to use the Blood Razor to hit Phase, which enables the 7-7s. Seven I think I'll probably do that right. This enables 7-7, seven, seven, but he could also tap into the 7-7, seven, seven, so it's not like this enables anything too special. And this is the only setup that I have that answers a giant. If he chooses to go with that line. There's the 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't necessarily have to kill it immediately. Although I guess I want to. Then I can't answer a giant next turn. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I get a couple of draws here, so... That's something. I have the boom, but this is where I might start running out of steam a little bit. Can you play another game of this one? No. This will be the last game. Can we call it a day? I started a bit late today. I usually start like an hour earlier. But I was writing an article for Hearthstone Top Decks and I only managed to submit it a, it a bit late. So I had to postpone the stream a little bit. I want to get to that boom, and I want to get to that assembly. I'm not expecting a skulking geist here. Maybe I should. Oh, a mossy. Well, that was a surprise. Tuck all my assemblies. 
So I have to go boom either this turn or next turn to get this Omega Assembly is going. If I go next turn I could also use the hero power that turn. But then my next turn is locked if I do that. I think I need to go boom this turn. I think this is necessary. I can buy a bit of time, then maybe the Omega Assemblies can carry me. Hopefully. But now he can feel confident enough to finally play a giant. No, he was running Skulking guys, and that wins the game. I really didn't expect him to have a Skulking Geist in the deck at all. We can still win if we can get some Discover Max going. But it's a lot more difficult now. So let me see. If I super collide, I hit this when he played our super collider well. So I would have 50% to kill this with the super collider. I think this is still a super collider play. Let's take the 50 50. I lose the 50 50. Feels bad, man. 11. And I could still kill this. I think I'll opt for this line. Let's see. There's still ways. He is not very high on health. Does he have cooldown? And if he does, when? Now I was able to find my Ziliax. I can get some. We can still maybe do this, but I didn't expect that Geist. And losing both of my guys simply there was obviously very painful. And it makes winning this game less likely. He has to have cooldown for next turn, right? That's the only way any of this makes sense. Oh, I guess a big spell stone also makes sense. Alright. He has silence in that deck. I can hit here, then these two will kill each other. Then I could do a Ziliax kill on this. Dynomatic deals 5 damage. So that's 8 damage. There's currently 10 held on the board. I could actually do this too. I used to rush to kill that. I think this was... I think I liked this one. I think this was fine. This saves the Ziliax for now. He's going to have double silence in the deck most likely. This saved a charge of the Super Collider to be used on bigger targets. It's probable that I would get to keep the Dynomatic when I do it with that order. Because the Dynomatic has rush because I'm boom. I have 14 damage. Not quite there. But I'm pretty close. So I deal 1 damage to all enemies. And I will execute the giant. But I guess I will Ziliax the face. So I execute the giant. And I will Ziliax him in the face. Pow, put him down to 9. Do I need to put him down to 8? 
No, that's not going to be useful, I suppose. Let's try this approach. We've seen both hooked reavers. We've seen a homunculus. We've seen spellstone. Both spellstones. Lich King A. So Grom Warpath 6, 7, 8. And that is lethal. Yep, we got this. Hit there, hit there, Grom to the face. Boom. Got it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.